everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I don't like to leave any dye behind. In fact, one of my mottos is leave no dye behind. Right here I have a steam pan filled with some leftovers of a forest green color. And the, the pan is pretty much cooled, but I just added um, 100 grams of Stroll fingering weight yarn to the pan and you can see we just soaked up that color straight away. And now I think we should add some more water and vinegar and add some other leftover dyes that I have around. Okay, I'm gonna add about two more cups of water and this is approximately a tablespoon of vinegar. We'll see, I likely will end up wanting to add more vinegar in a little bit, but yeah, this water is, especially now with the addition, pretty cold. Um, let's go ahead and spread out this yarn and we'll see what other leftover dyes I have around that we can add to it. I turned the butters on. I'm now wearing my face mask. One of the first things I want to do is I've got a little residual color at the bottom of this stock container. And I really don't want to leave it behind because there is some good color in this. So I just added a little water to this bottle, swirled it up. Now, hmm, how do I want to do this? I'm going to add it onto some of the yarn. Now, even though I've just turned the burners on, this is not yet hot. And I can sort of massage this color through the yarn a bit. Oh, good. I was a little afraid that it would overpower this a bit too much, but I've got sort of this reddish section and this bluish section on the other side. And for good measure, here's some leftover pink that I have around. Now, you might be able to tell from the change in quality of my voice that I am now wearing a death mask. <laughs> And that's because I have been dealing with a lot of different dye powders today. Um, and I had a lot of extras. Now, a bunch of those extras I have added to my brand new All My Leftover Powders container, um, which I'll save and then I'll have like random mystery mixtures of color or something. But there is still a little bit of dye left in these two cups. Well, that came out. Oh, that's the purple. That's that purple. And then we also have... Some spruce. Now granted, this is adding color just to one side of the yarn. I probably should have arranged it in here a bit differently, but we really are just sort of going for it with leaving no color behind. And you can see I just added some water to the cups so we can get more of those residuals back out. Oh, that really is not that warm yet. <laughs> okay. I'm also flipping it around. Hmm. Let me give us some of the spruce color. Some more of these purples. I'm sort of layering it all in there. And since it is not that hot yet, I can wiggle it. I wonder. Oh, nice. 
because I think the vinegar is relatively low, um, I definitely have a few speckles in here, but it's not like as like speckly, speckly as it could have been. And actually, I am all sort of like protected to go do some speckling. So, <laughs> now that we have this base color on here, why yeah, don't we go into my mixture and add on some speckles? But before we open up that mixture, I'm adding a few healthy splashes of vinegar because I'm going to want these colors to strike faster than what I had going on before. There we go. Heat up. This mixture is mostly spruce with a little bit of violet thrown in. So let's just sort of speckle onto this and see what happens. <laughs> I'm sort of trying to pick from the region where there may be some purple, but not trying to worry about it too much. All right. Um, did I get any purple in there? Maybe. It's hard to say. I think I got mostly some of that spruce. Um, hard to say. I haven't exactly mixed it up in this container yet at all. Um, but I'm going to now let this sit for, I think, at least five minutes, and then I'll flip it over, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, it has been over five minutes. Let's go ahead and flip this over. I really wish that I had a um, zip tie, a re uh, removable zip tie on here. But nevertheless, uh, it's not so hot that I can... I can still kind of stick my hands into it, sort of give us access to this other side. I'm going to go ahead and sort of shake things out. Now I'm going to dry my hands and add some speckles. This is our mostly spruce but somewhat mystery mixture. Really, it's mostly spruce. I grabbed a big pinch, but I'm like barely moving my fingers to get a really slow, um, so you can see just how much dye I was holding there, but you get like a slow sort of dip. And then some back in. I'm curious, now I know that this evergreen, sorry, this forest green color definitely breaks a tiny bit. There's like another tone that's in there. Um, but I'm trying to see, okay, I see like one purple speckle maybe. <laughs> All right, but I think that adding those speckles sort of evens out the randomness of this whole color line. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up wanting to add some more or not, but I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for at least five minutes, and then we'll come take another look. Over five minutes are up, and just check out those beautiful speckles. All right, let's move in and see. Looks like we're pretty well cleared. now. I have a really low level of water here and I have not been sort of like covering it and so when you're doing something with this low level of water, keep an eye on it. You want to keep an eye on it because you don't want to risk burning your yarn. But this is actually looking pretty good. I, there are definitely some sections with like fewer speckles but I'm not seeing anything that looks like a whole region where it's like, oh my gosh, there's nothing for days. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat. And because after a big day of dyeing yarn, I don't have anywhere to put this, I am going to go ahead and let this cool off here in the steam pan a bit. Um, and then once it's completely cool, we can go wash it. But I just want to show you already that that water is in fact clear. 
wash our kitchen sink yarn. Kitchen sink, no dye left behind, a little bit of everything. There are many, many names that people call this type of yarn, especially because whatever it is, it'd be really hard to reproduce it exactly since things weren't measured. Um, and even our speckles came from, I mean, who am I kidding? A sore screen. But a mixture of powder dyes. Maybe as I add more powders in there, we'll get more and more of a mixture. But I have a feeling if I took that and I just dissolved it, it would be four screen. So let's see if we're going to see any bleeding. Hmm. Maybe a hair. But basically this water is clear. Um, so I am now, actually, huh, I'm like, it's hard to tell if it's blue or if it's reflecting from my blue shirt. Um, but I mean, in terms of pigment, there is basically nothing coming out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it a couple more times and then hang this yarn up to dry. How is that from no dye left behind? Using leftovers from cups and bottles, we combined a bunch of different acid dye colors to get this really random, uh, variegated yarn that I would call semi-repeating, but it isn't like a perfect repeating colorway that you could use for planned pooling or something like that. I think that these speckles we added towards the end really do bring the whole colorway together. Even if I don't actually see any of the purple from that mixture of powders, you know, I think that it is beautiful and fantastic. And it gives it sort of like a new edge versus just being sort of a pastel-y leftover dyed yarn. When I have a lot of colors remaining after a day of filling, and I sort of want to throw them together on a skein of yarn, so that way I'm not wasting any of the dyes, I really want to leave no dye behind here. Uh, I just love when something comes together and works so well. Um, it would be very possible if the saturation levels were vastly different for the yarn to feel a little unbalanced or a little sloppy, but this does feel like there is some beautiful intention in it. And this is something that I would love, love, love to go and create. Um, again, I love this effect and I think that I might need to plan on some subtle all over speckles on top of some random pastel variegated yarns in the future. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video and how I just threw things together, you should check out the Leave No Dye Behind playlist. I love to create videos with leftover dyes because why pour it down the drain when you can create something else absolutely beautiful? I also have the Dye Pot Weekly series where the videos involve a bit more planning in terms of the amount of dye and colors that I'm putting in. But even when I put in more planning before an episode, my approach is to, hey, what's gonna happen if we do X, Y, Z with yarn? What kind of colors are, can we create? And I think that that makes it really easy to always be excited and satisfied with the results. Sure, occasionally I'm disappointed and I always let you know, but that is my philosophy when it comes to yarn dyeing. And if you enjoy it, you really wanna subscribe. Finally, if you'd like to bring home a little piece of Chemnitz, there are a couple ways you can do that. We have some official Chemnitz merch through Zazzle, where you can get a Leave No Dye Behind diary, haha, or even some mugs with the Chemnitz Creations logo. Additionally, the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store is filled with over 100 skeins of hand-dyed yarn featured in past and upcoming YouTube videos. So you should go check it out because your favorite yarn from your favorite video might just still be available. Thank you so much for watching.